Hello all of you little demons, Jules here for WhatCulture.com, back again with another episode of the awesomely named and awfully hosted Choose Your Own Adventure, the weekly medieval theme format where I, the crown jewels of freelance WhatCulture.com, take a list chosen by you, yes you the person whose arm mount here is so close to breaking, I don't know how I've done it, but I've warped and bent the metal that it may actually fall off during recording this. So that's going to be fun. Yes, you get to decide what list I dole out to you each and every week. And this week we have none other to thank than <laughs> Joshua Hara for their suggestion of video game side characters that you'd wished you'd been able to play as. Because what is a video game without a compelling protagonist that you'll want to spend tens or even hundreds of hours with? And no matter how well written and addictive a game might be otherwise, without an interesting and entertaining lead, they're always going to be missing that one essential piece. <laughs> It'll be like a list not hosted by me, am I right, everyone? <laughs> no, I kid, all of my co-workers are really nice people. But sometimes it just becomes screamingly obvious that one of the side characters has categorically stolen the show, enough so that you wish you were just playing as them instead. And that is absolutely the case with these eight supporting video game characters, whose charm, loyalty, combat readiness, and overall badassery made them much more of an appealing proposition than the meat sack that we were stuck playing with. So let's take a look at them today, as I'm Jules, this is WhatCulture.com, and these are eight video game side characters you wished you got to play as. And you know the drill by now, say hi to me here in the live chat and put your suggestions for next week's episode down in the comment section below. But with this in mind, let's get on with the list, shall we? Ooh, ooh, ooh. Yeah. <laughs> Number eight, Barry Burton, Resident Evil. Sorry, Resident Evil. Now, the original Resident Evil gave players the choice of stepping into the shoes of either Jill Valentine or the inventory-challenged Man Mountain that is Chris Redfield. Sorry, you'll have to speak up, my pockets are full of protein. <laughs> but much as we might like Jill and Chris, they ultimately play a distant second fiddle to the true beating heart of the entire Resident Evil franchise, and that is Barry Bloody Burton. Yes, it is a weird middle name. Barry may be a goofball support character for Jill in the first game, but his penchant for howlingly ridiculous one-liners, healthy appetite for Jill sandwiches, and all-around good guy vibes make him by far the most charming and generally likeable character. Even with his rep for being quasi-unintentional comic relief, Barry is extremely helpful throughout the game, often showing up at just the right time with his trusty magnum in order to provide a handy assist against a tough enemy, enough so to make you wonder why we're not just playing as this guy all along. Long. And though Barry did eventually become a canon playable character in Resident Evil Revelations do, and also had a few cameos in different mercenaries modes across the years, it's still a crying shame that he never really got a chance to shine in the original Resident Evil. I mean, just imagine how good this game would be from his perspective, having to run in and save your teammates, or spouting one-liners, and getting to use that magnum all the time, just walking through on easy mode. Spiders, bye. Zombies, see ya. It's a shame, a crying shame. Boo-hoo. Number 7. Geordie Chin, Watch Dogs Now, it's in no way controversial to say that Watch Dogs' is, 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 protagonist Aiden Pierce is like a giant walking piece of wood in desperate search of a personality. Seriously, I have seen unskippable YouTube ads that promote elder punching that have more charm than him. As close to a po-faced parody of a video game protagonist as Ubisoft will ever willingly give us, from his name to his face to his voice to his charisma void of personality, he feels like a player character that has been generated by ChatGPT on a bad day. And it's all the more maddening given that the right guy for the job was right freaking there. Geordie Chin is Aiden's partner and fixer throughout the game, an impossibly slick, charismatic fella who is basically everything that Aiden isn't. That is, everything that you'd actually want in a Watch Dogs protagonist protagonist. Aiden is by comparison a dull, blunt object, and Geordie even points this out at many points throughout the game, and that's actually not a great idea because Ubisoft is like, oh god, look at this guy that you're playing as, what a mug, and the player's like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> In a game as fundamentally ridiculous as this, Geordie's playful sociopathic leanings and endearing loquaciousness make him just such a better fit for the larger-than-life material at stake. Aiden, conversely, is gruff and dour to the point that he's ironically impossible to take seriously. Instead, Geordie is regrettably relegated to supporting player status while we're forced to slog through the campaign as one of the most charmless video game heroes of the last decade. 
In the event that a fourth Watch Dogs eventually does happen, they've got a character waiting in the wings who is ready to take centre stage, but unfortunately, I wouldn't place any money on it because after all, it's Ubisoft, baby! <laughs> <laughs> the company that wants to use AI to generate all of its missions going forward. Ooh boy, we're in for a wild ride. Number six, Nick Valentine, Fallout 4. Now as great as Fallout 4 might be, that's rather in spite of the fact that its protagonist, the sole survivor, is an absolute nothing burger of a hero. Even with this being the first game in the series to feature a fully voiced protagonist, the sole survivor's cringy, sarcastic quips and lessened impact on the overall world make them one of the series' least compelling main characters to date. And plus, by the way, can we just talk about those sarcastic lines? They were so ill-fitted to the world around them. What are you gonna do? Shoot me? Bang, 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 bang. What are you gonna do? Stab me? Stab, 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 stab. What are you gonna do? Dip me? That's a reference to Fallout 1 for my true mutants in the back. High five, my mutated brethren. But Fallout 4 did introduce fans to one of the greatest sidekicks in video game history in the form of Nick Valentine, so I guess we'll have to forgive them. Or at least learn to hate a little less, which is pretty much what my entire life is all about. <laughs> A trench coat and fedora wearing detective synth heavily inspired by classic hard boiled fiction by way of Blade Runner, Nick is by far the game's most entertaining companion and, honestly, one of Bethesda's best written characters ever. And so, banishing him to supporting NPC duty can't help feel like a bit of a waste. It's kind of like hiring Humphrey Bogart to be a mere day player in a film noir, it just doesn't make any damn sense. From his fascinating backstory to his amusing personality, Nick basically feels like a perfect Bethesda lead on paper, a gruff gumshoe with a heart of gold whose wild case history could keep players entertained in perpetuity. Simply put, Bethesda is leaving huge stacks of money, or in this case, caps, on the table by not having Nick be a centre figure going forward. Come on, idiots! Number 5. VV Final Fantasy IX now, I know that this is going to be a contentious pick for some people because everyone loves Zidane, but at the same time, he's no Vivi! And while it is fair to say that some supporting characters would lose their charm and appeal were they thrust into the main character role, it's tough to believe that this would ever happen here, given that Vivi is already the beating heart and soaring soul of this entire game. Now, to be fair, Zidane was certainly a refreshing riposte to the moodier, sulky heroes of the two previous Final Fantasy titles, even if he's ultimately not that interesting and his, uh, well, overpowering horniness has aged him like milk left out in the scorching sun. But Vivi, however, is a more compelling character in every single way, from his unique look to his fascinatingly tragic backstory as a black mage and outstandingly led emotional development throughout the game. Now Zidane, or Zidane, depending on how you want to pronounce it, is fine, but at the end of the day, Vivi just steals the show whenever he's in a scene with him, so why do we not get to play as him? Come on! Vivi's journey of self-discovery, of learning what to do with the short time allocated to him in life, is arguably the best of the entire Final Fantasy series, and it's tough to imagine that magic diminishing if he switched places with our central protagonist. If Square Enix ever gets around to remaking Final Fantasy IX, it would be a bold change well worth making. I mean, hell, at least give him an extended gameplay segment, satisfy the fans that are calling out for Vivi to be the main character. Come on! Number 4. Lamar Davis, Grand Theft Auto V now, Grand Theft Auto V largely pulls off its three protagonist gimmick with flying colours, but let's face facts, Franklin is definitely the lesser of the three lead characters. Though relatively virtuous compared to Michael and especially Trevor, Franklin's normality is also what makes him one of the series' least interesting heroes to date, a straight guy buffer for those who find the other characters a little bit too extra and, uh, well, psychopathic. And ultimately, Franklin is nowhere near as entertaining as his best buddy Lamar, who is like a vending machine of amazing one-liners and stupidly memorable moments. Uh, yes, please, I would like a can of banter juice. Uh, there we go. Bitches on your dick. Ah, that's good vintage. <laughs> Refreshing. He's effectively a polarity-reversed version of Franklin. He's outgoing and ridiculous in all the ways that Franklin is ordinary and, honestly, a little bit boring. Above all else, though, throwing Lamar into the mix with Michael and Trevor and robbing the game of its card-carrying straight man would have actually made for one hell of a combustible, chaotic trio. And here's a bit of a weird fact for you. There was actually rumoured that in the original draft of a Grand Theft Auto V, Franklin was going to die and you were going to take up the mantle of Lamar, but for whatever reason, they completely changed course. Interesting though, interesting. 
Number 3. Goro Majima – Yakuza Like a Dragon Though Kazuma Kiryu is objectively the Yakuza series' protagonist, his exhaustingly stoic personality ultimately can't hold a candle to the franchise's uncrowned king in the form of Goro. Nagoro has been one of Yakuza's mainstay supporting characters since its inception, and only finally became playable in the prequel Yakuza 0, where he shared protagonist duties with Kiryu. But Yakuza really only typified that Majima is the series' most entertaining character, a glorious walking cartoon compared to Kiryu in particular, enough so that he basically feels like a pointed parody of self-serious video game heroes. The mad dog of Shimano may be an absolute force of chaos, but he's a force of chaos with a kind of well-intentioned good nature, and that's what makes him so effervescent, effable, ineffable. It's hard to describe, it literally, it's ineffable. I cannot describe how charming this man is. As such, it's a damn shame that he wasn't given full solo protagonist honours in the most recent mainline Yakuza game, Like a Dragon. And while Like a Dragon's protagonist Ichiban was himself a chilled out breath of fresh air compared to Kiryu, he was no substitute for the Mad Dog. And the worst part is, is that now we've had a taste of Mad Dog stew, all we want to do is have more of it. So I tell you what, Sega, take him off of the specials board and put him onto the main menu because, my lord, it is dinner time, baby. Number 2. Elizabeth – Bioshock Infinite So, Bioshock Infinite's Elizabeth is generally accepted to be one of the greatest AI companions in video game history, and considering that the game is really her story, there's a fair argument to be made that she should have been the player character instead of Booker DeWitt. Now, to be clear, Booker isn't bad by any means, but Elizabeth's characterization is so much richer and deeper. Plus, considering the game is effectively a reverse escort mission where Elizabeth spends most of her time protecting Booker, it'd certainly be fitting if we played as her instead. She's got a fantastic fantastic character arc, her voice acting is excellent, and she has a dynamic personality which differentiates her from the overwhelming majority of rather stiff AI companions, and as such, she forges a far greater bond with most players than Booker could ever hope to do. And though Elizabeth did become playable for a short time in Bioshock Infinite's DLC, it's not really the same as a full-fledged experience. And just think about it, they could have actually taken her special powers and incorporated them into the gameplay, which would have actually created a very different experience to a run-of-the-mill first-person shooter. I mean, think about it this way. If she used her tears, right, to bring in assistance and throw weapons to an AI-controlled booker and you never carried a gun yourself, well, it becomes a resource management game about strategizing and using the resources that you have in order to overcome the enemy. I would love that, that would be so much better, and it would make it stand out so much more than just a run-of-the-mill generic first-person shooter. Come on! Again, Booker is an absolutely fine lead, but Elizabeth would have been an all-time player character. Instead, she'll just have to settle for being the GOAT of supports. And number one, Garrus Vakarian, Mass Effect. You just knew that this was going to be on the list at some point, and I have to give it to the top spot, because at the end of the day, Garrus is just so lovable, he is just so stoic, he is just so memorable and such a badass that I'd need my head recalibrated if I didn't include him here. Now, your mileage will surely vary with Mass Effect's protagonist Commander Shepard, depending on whether you chose Femme Shep or a rather sawdust dry male counterpart, but all the same, neither Shepard can truly hold a candle to Garrus. Now, Garrus is the consensus favourite companion character throughout the original trilogy for damn good reason. He's a velvet voiced badass with a firm moral core and basically undying loyalty to Shepard, yet he's not afraid to call out bullshit when he sees it. And whether you stay strictly pals or become lovers, what more could you possibly want? And unlike most companions, Garrus actually has a substantial role across all three games, while being meaningfully developed as he seeks to find his place in the galaxy. Now everyone wants that space bro who's got your back on these adventures, but you know what's better than that? Actually playing as the space bro, so I'm just completely flabbergasted while we've never been given the chance to do so now. He's, like I said before, he's so absolutely lovable and charming that it's just a real shame that we haven't got a chance to inhabit him, in a non-creepy way of course, in video game form. And there we go, my friends. Those were eight video game side characters you wish you got the chance to play as. Hope you enjoyed that, and please let me know what you thought about it down in the comment section below, and put your suggestions for next week's episode down there as well. Now, if you want to get in touch with me in the meantime between these episodes, you can go over to the social medias where I'm at RetroJ, but the O is a zero, and you can follow the lovely Dan who edits all of these videos over here as well. What's that? Oh, it's the sound of me not getting any credit for editing this video. <sighs> 
I know how it is. I know how it is. You know what, Jules? You can go f But if you want even more content, then I'm going to be on the Future Game Show doing my weekly Friday slot. It's kind of like list-based bits as well but with a few twists, which you'll see in the upcoming videos. I hope that you enjoy them. Hope to see you over there. That'd be absolutely fantastic. But before I go, I just want to say one thing. Even though we spoke today a lot about video game side characters, you, my friend, are the true all-star player. You deserve all the love, all the success, all of the respect, the respect, my friend, that every single person on this earth also deserves. So treat yourself with that love because you bloody well deserve it, all right? You're a good person. You deserve the best things in life and don't let anything or anyone else tell you otherwise, right? You're a massive ledge. Now go out there and smash your life goals today. I almost hit my arm there, and it is so dangerously close to falling off. I can see the metal has flexed to a paper-thin level. So I'm going to go before it actually collapses. Peace. See you soon. Bye. <laughs>